hell are we? On screen. Energize. On screen. Make it so. On screen. Come. Stand by for source of separation. What is it you want, Q? It is a truth universally acknowledged. The single man in possession of a good mate must be in want of a podcast. Austin. Classic. Classic. So, why, yes. So why, why, do, why does Jane Austen intersect with Star Trek? Don't know. Uh, can't, can't imagine why. Have they done like a Jane Austen? No, Red Dwarf did. Red Dwarf did? Red, Red Dwarf did a Jane Austen episode, which I think was a piss take of the, you know, the 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 planet like, of yeah, the like the, <laughs> yeah the, 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 the planet of the, the planet of recycled costumes <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the planet of we were we were next to the studio lot where they were filming a world war ii historical <laughs> so they, they went to a world war ii planet one time we need to talk about star trek we need to talk about star trek which is why we're doing this well in fairness we would be do, we would be talking about star trek we already do this yes this is this is just us recording it we formalized it we're formalizing it and, we, we're, 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 and putting it out into the into the ether, yeah, on, the, on the on the information superhighway, indeed, so and that other people can listen we, to us. Exactly, because we don't listen to us, but we're e- egotistical enough to think. That- <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Damo, and I, I'm Mick. <laughs> that was a decision I just made in the moment. Okay, I was going to be Mick or Mike. It's yeah. The, I mean, it's 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 a fine line. Like there 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 is blur between yeah the, so the persona and the uh, people who've seen me do Mick on stage have started calling me Mick in real life. Now. <laughs> but anyway, not only are we watching Star Trek, but we're watching it in the most unhinged order possible. The the only the order that only makes sense if you've already seen all of it. Yes, like the chronological order. The like. Chronological, not as in release order, as in in universe. What happened first? What do you say? The Q continuum. We, we, we've got a list. We've got a chronological. Yeah. Chron- we don't have it. It's it's Wikipedia's got it. We've stolen it off Wikipedia, and that's what we're. There, done, there, there are it off. a multitude of sources because people have put Star Trek into chronological order before. Yes, but I don't think anyone's done it this way. The the, the, the lists that I've seen are all like where the time travel not, takes yeah. them, and I want to do the exact opposite. I want to go <laughs> wherever the primary. Plot thread is that's where we're watching it. Yeah. What is what is the earliest event set in Star Trek? Like so. Yeah. So we some of these are moments that don't have enough of an episode. Yes. To, to justify a discussion. Yeah. Yes. So the 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 very first thing that ever happens in Star Trek is a member of the Q continuum goes back before the Big Bang to commit suicide. Yes. People are going to say I got the plot to that episode. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people are saying this, and the, 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 I say they're wrong. I, I'm, no, 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 I'm not even that. I know that that is a bad proceed. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Describe an episode bad. <laughs> this is the and 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 it is just a, it, it's just a matter of minutes from the moment that we post this anywhere to mm. a comment that begins with the word actually. Actually, yes. Um, actually, no, I don't. I think you'll find that in star date two four seven three eight nine six six point one. You do that voice too well. Uh, it's, uh, it's my natural voice. <laughs> this is me putting on a voice now. This is this is this is me trying to act normal. It's actually, I think you'll find that that, that that's not in canon. I think you'll find it's uh, the... anyway. So the most unhinged order possible. Yeah. So if you're listening to this, spoiler warning. Yes, yes. This is probably not going to make a lot of sense to you. If, if if this is your f- introduction to the Star Trek universe, firstly, why? Secondly, you're making a terrible mistake. You should probably talk about the name of the bloody show too. Well, I, one one thing I want to do first is I, I just want Before, to do. Well, okay. I just, just want to do one thing is like the 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 clear rules of engagement. Rules of engagement with the Star Trek canon. Okay, so we're going to watch episodes in order of which the primary events occurred. Yes. So if it's a time travel episode, it's where they time travel to. The most unhinged order that you can possibly watch Star Trek in that will not make any sense to anyone who has not already seen all of Star Trek. Absolutely not. It, it, is, a, it is a rewatch. Which is why I thought it would be funny if we could get someone to come in here with us to watch it along with us who has never seen Star Trek as a confused onlooker, I suppose. 
But so, um, so some, some some sort of person who would be wearing a red shirt, for example. Or yes, yes, yes a red a, shirt. A, we we should have a red shirt in. I, I'd love to do that. <laughs> I don't think we can dedicate one person to like yes. No, no. Do, watch the long. entire thing. Do, do, strap him to a chair. No, but he. Clockwork Orange style, but once in a while, I might I might rep in Eris because like I know Eris has only ever seen the original series. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when they were like eleven years old mm. or something like that, so it's like yeah, that's that's a very weird age and specific subset of Star Trek to have been your sole experience. True, very true. But I I wouldn't mind perhaps like you know dropping them in on some next gen stuff that just yeah that doesn't make any sense <laughs> 100%. outside of context yeah 100 percent. i'm gonna look at my um list of episode order now this is about to get revised because i haven't included the strange new worlds episode from a couple of weeks ago oh the um yeah the with, with the alternate kirk yeah, so like, yeah, so this is exciting. So this is the, 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 this illustrates a point of like, yeah, if if an, if a new one comes out that an, is based prior to the chronology, chrono, prior to the chronology of where we're up to, yeah. then we have to go back and watch that immediately. Immediately, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so like, yeah, and Strange New Worlds has already pointed out this is likely to happen because yeah. since writing this list, you know, a few weeks ago, and now recording, mm. the list has changed. Yeah. Because they slid another one back in in where did they slide back to? So that was where does it go? Uh, it, it goes after Picard season three, yeah. But before was because it, it doesn't actually say a year, so so it may be before the Bell riots of mm. D- Deep Space Nine, which is next year. Which is next year, yeah, twenty twenty four. Twenty as you pointed out before, the twenty twenty four is going to be a very big year. We've got the Irish reunification, we've got the Bell riots, and there was another thing: the entirety of Picard season two. Entirety of Picard season two. It's yeah. It's it's, it's we're going to have Starfleet. Like, if you do, if you are walking around the street next year, chances are you're going to walk past a Starfleet officer that's accidentally been been thrust back in time. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, and but it, it may it may be one that we haven't seen in the episode four yet. Yes, it probably may, it may be in production. Yes, so anyway, so look, I, I think we'll go go through the, the the quick list of just like the first few episodes that we intend to cover. Yes, okay. So the very first, the the chronologically earliest episode, complete episode storyline that occurs in Star Trek is the original series season three, episode twenty three, the second last episode of the entire original series. The, the original series, yes, or Pen- a, penultimate. All our yesterdays, mm. in which is set about five thousand years before now. Yes, uh, in, in which Kirk and Spock travel back five thousand years and in bones. the past. Uh, and bones. Yes. Is it three of them? I forget. Yeah. Well, so, so, so yeah. So Kirk uh, goes to one plot spot in the past, yep. and Bones and Spock go to a different one. Oh right. See, it's been. See, I, I, I haven't rewatched the episode in preparation yet. So, but um, yes. Anyway, I'd almost say don't. Don't bother. <laughs> don't, don't bother watching. What's the point of this then? <laughs> well, Next say, week I, we're going to do this episode, but we're not going to bother I watching. Did, I, did, I did say almost. <laughs> you can almost get everything. I mean, if you, we're skipping episodes, can we skip all of Picard season two? I just mean to say, like, you can almost get everything you need from that episode by just reading, reading the, the Wikipedia. The, the synopsis <laughs> on Wikipedia. It, 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 it doesn't really have a coherent thing. It's, it's, it's one of those episodes, like, a sci-fi thing happens yeah. that makes things difficult. For, it doesn't have, a, but the, it doesn't have an, a message. It doesn't have an overall cohesive thing. It's just hmm. a bunch of sci-fi shit happens to our intrepid crew. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like that's. There's nothing wrong with that, mm. but you know, it's not. It's it's not going to stick out in your memory. Okay. Well, like. Okay, let, let, I'm going to talk about it because I did watch it last night. Okay. I, I, I tried to pay attention. I was like, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was tough. Because well, it's, uh, uh, it, it's important to know that like, they, they travel 5,000 back, years back, back, to, back to the future, back into the past, um, but it's not Earth's past. It's a different planet's past. Correct. So literally... It, it, it could have been yeah. anywhere, anytime. It, could, it, it does not need to be the earliest. It, the, the time in which it happens is completely irrelevant. Yes. The point is... They come to a planet because they're going, oh, that star's about to explode. Better have a look. Discovered like there's a planet with some people on it and go beam down and say, hey, do you guys know your star's going to explode to find everyone's fucked off? And, and, and there's one guy that goes, yeah, yeah, I know. I 
don't give yeah. a shit. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to die. No, no, no. He was he was ready to go. The, 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 he he also had a plan. He was just going to be the last one out. Cause oh, he was, like, he, was the, he was operating the shit for everyone else who left, okay. and he was the last one left. Convert and save must have saved him heaps on casting because if they <laughs> if they'd arrived a day earlier. Um, their their bu- their extras budget would have been <laughs> everyone's <laughs> loading on to fucking there shuttles. Been, there would have been yeah, there would have been queues for these little portals through time. <laughs> Out the door, yeah. Um, but anyway, so people get to pick a point in past they go to, and that's where they're going to live instead of dying when the sun explodes. Which is, yeah. the, uh, there's a flaw in that plan. One or two. Well, it depends on which time travel theory you subscribe to. Well, the Star Trek one mainly, which is usually linear, mm. in which if you go back, it changes the future. Unless you go back to a point where you had already gone point, and like, unless you're already in that universe that's branched off. Like, you know, if you're in the universe that's branched off, then you go back and what you did always had happened anyway. Sure. It could be a closed loop. Yeah. Uh, a closed loop isn't... A contradiction in Star Trek time travel. You need those bloody temporal investigations guys from the, the end of Trouble and tri- Trouble with Trials, and, Trials tri- and Tribulations. Yes. yes, who have always been there. Yes, have always been there. But I mean, in, in, in the original series, they casually go back in time a few times. Oh yeah, it's like there's one episode that I'm sure we'll get to. Is like before too long. Is like it it opens with like yo know, Jimmy going so. The Federation sent us back to 1968 to have a look at this some shit. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is before the temporal prime directive, I suppose. A, I mean, this is the thing because like can you have before the temporal prime prime directive. I mean, it's 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 time travel. It's like if 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 the temporal prime directive has well, ever existed, thing. it's always existed. It's, it's the same thing as as like if. Um, like a big thing in Star Trek of recent years is the whole ban on, you know, genetic alterations and, and, you know, because, you know, Khan was a bad guy. So therefore no one's allowed to alter their genomes ever, which let's not get into that. But there was an an early episode of of next generation where they, you know, there's a whole bunch of people that have these genetic alterations and nobody gave a shit about it. Mm. Nobody was going to arrest the people responsible for them. It just made Dr. Pol, Lasky, old. Did they did, were they allowed in the federation? Were they federation citizens? Though they were federation citizens. Yes, because like, like like the a, way that they seem to be playing at the moment is like you're just not allowed to join Starfleet. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're not allowed to join Starfleet, but like you're also not allowed in the federation. Like that 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 planet that Una was mm. was from is a non federated world. Mm. It was just a like they're not allowed. You're not allowed here. We don't want your. We we, we don't take kindly to your type around here. <laughs> We, 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 we don't allow your people in our federation. We, we're, we're an accepting of all cultures and races, except for you. You should be as no god that we believe in because religion's irrelevant. <laughs> as you say, like, like it, it, it's technically a time travel episode, but it doesn't travel to any recognisable time period because it doesn't happen on Earth. So, no. yeah. Yeah, and there's no there's no consequences. There's no. no there's no thing. It's just like yeah, just like yeah, we know some shit. And, happened and that and entire planet's whole plan is to travel to different points in the past. I think it's also different planets. I think they're going all over the shop. Oh, are they? It's like yeah, because like the, well, one of the the subplot the, with the bones and Spock are engaged in is like yeah, this woman has been tricked into going back to like an inhospitable ice cave to die alone. Right. And she's like, oh, but now Spock's here. Awesome, because Bones is like, you know, dying of exposure and shivering under blankets, but Spock's there being like, well, you know, I'm very, you it, know... It would be illogical to, sl- to freeze to death. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I find the cold his, illogical. His, his, his superior Vulcan, <laughs> you know, physiology was not so poor, as badly affected as Bones. Bones always called him cold-blooded. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, but anyway, so she goes, well, great, you're here now. I'm not going to die alone. Let's get it on. <laughs> and Spock is like, well, you're so attractive. I'm going to forget I'm Vulcan. Okay, that makes perfect and, sense. And they get it on. But then Jim manages to contact them from the future. Right. And they hear his voice, and, and they're and, like, and Spock's realise, oh, hang on, that's Spock's who I want like, to bone. Yeah, well, Spock's like, well, I could, me and Bones could like go back with Jim, and leave this woman here to die, 
So, like, they have to leave her there, and when they get back to the present, Spock's like, well, it'd be a logical degree because she's been dead for 5,000 5, years. What am I... Yeah. So it's, it's like the direct opposite of, what, what, of Kirk's girlfriend from City on the Edge of Forever. Hmm. It's, it's, it's like Kirk fell in love with her and was all upset about it, and Spock falls in love with a past lady and just goes... I'm, I'm just wondering if this is some kind of contractual thing for Nimoy. It was like, you know, just like, I, it's like, you know, I want at least one episode where I get to get it on with the alien chick. <laughs> <laughs> the original series had a whole running thread of people who wanted to bone Spock, but couldn't because he was all Vulcan about it. Mm. Like the, the, the whole, the whole series, like the, the nurse chapel thing, which I suppose has been retconned on in strange mm. new worlds lately was the, the unrequitedness of it of the whole thing. Mm. And then it turns out like he's promised to the Pringle. I should should explain that to other people. But someone I follow on Twitter is watching strange new worlds and had her phone correct to Pring's name to the Pringle. And so that's her name now, as far as everyone should be concerned. Also, she calls, she she calls um, Spock's mother, Amanda Spockington. This all seems perfectly valid yeah. to me. I, 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 sh- I take issue with none of this. I should actually give credit where it's due. I'm going to look up the Twitter user who has given us that gift. Jennifer Lee Rossman. Right. Jen L. Rossman on Twitter um, is, is to be credited with, with calling to Pring the Pringle and Amanda Spockington. Wait, so, so City on the Edge of Forever happens... I don't know, because the... The time, I'm thinking time travel episodes in Enterprise that went yeah. back further, but they didn't go back all the way back to the 60s, which is... Where, okay, here, never mind. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll read out the list as I, as I have determined it. And like I say, I will research further as we approach each one just in case there's anything to correct. But the, the, the initial episode list I have is All Our Yesterdays, mm-hmm. followed by Time's Arrow, mm-hmm. um, which is like you know, Data's head on a stick. Okay. Well, Time's Arrow is a double, double episode, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, but I think we'll just do it as one. I don't, oh, yeah, I don't yeah, think course. we need to drag we, that we, we, we don't need two podcast episodes for there is There's some fun shit to talk about there the, about, about Past Guinan, though. Past Guinan, yes. Past, past Guinan is, you know, has, 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 has some quality aspects to it. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Sitting on the Edge of Forever, followed by Enterprise Season 4, Episode 1, Stormfront, which is Nazis. The Nazis ones, yeah. Yes. Uh, then Little Green Men, DS9, which yeah. is the... the uh, Ferengi, the, the Ferengi, Roswell. Roswell yep. thing, yeah. Uh, Enterprise Season 2 is Carbon Creek, which is... The, that's the Vulcans on Earth thing, isn't it? Carbon Creek. Is, uh, is that, the, is that the, the, the Vulcans on the, Earth? Yeah, that's the Vulcans playing pool, yeah. I, I believe. Yeah. Then Original Series Season 2, Assignment Earth. The, ah, yep. That, the, that, that's the one with, where they um, get... A routine assignment to 1968. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and just happened to be there in and time for a, another series to spin off. Yeah, yeah, which never happened. No. What was well, it, I, Gary Seven? Yeah. It, it could have worked. I, I, there, was, there was interesting sure. thoughts there, but, you know, it, it could have been, yeah. We'll never know. Wasn't it – the backstory of that episode, wasn't it originally, like, going to be just a whole different series, but then – that sort of never took off, so they rolled it in as an episode of Star Trek and hoped to spin it off from it. I don't know. I, I we'll, we'll we'll talk about that when we get to it. I'll yeah, do some research. Yep. But yeah, I thought I thought it was just like a your traditional backdoor pilot, like yeah, run and Yeah, like, I mean, because you know, back in the day they didn't do backdoor pilots. Backdoor pilots is sort of a, a relatively yeah. New invention. So maybe it's, so we're, we're talking about maybe a time travel thing. I mean, a time travel <laughs> came back and told Gene Roddenberry about the concept of backdoor pilots. Yeah, definitely. That's that's definitely what and happened. That gave him an idea for a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon Earth, followed by Tomorrow Is Yesterday, ever, original series episode, uh, season one, episode nineteen, followed by Star Trek IV: The Voyage Home. Yes, the one with the whales. Yes, we'll do the movies in context. Yes, and I don't, and I presume the Kelvin universe as well. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, well, we've got to do the Kelvin universe. It's just like where that sort of fits in with everything else, because you know it's it's like it, it's yeah. You know, I think it's happening at around the same time as Discovery. Yeah, pretty much. Is Most it? of it. Yeah, I mean, we'll do. We, we, obviously, it's, it's 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 early to get bogged down on that. Yet. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's let's not discuss the minutiae of 
what the bullshit we're doing. So what is it? So, so the, I was just going to say, let's, let, let's do the quick summary of things that happened before Think, the episode we're talking about. Yes, yes. This is the... So, so things, the, things that have, have occurred in Star Trek canon, but there hasn't been an episode based on it. Yeah. It's just been mentioned every now and again. So this, this, this could be a section with a name. This could be a section of a podcast with a name, like a section where we talk about, you know, the catch-up or, like, you know, what's, what's gone before, like... Previously on... Previously, uh, previously on... Yeah, Star Trek. Yeah. Pre- previously not on Star Trek. Previously. Because we're, previously on no episode of Star Trek ever. Mm. Uh, that's a weird accent. I don't like that. Okay. So up to the point where we're at, at um, about 5,000 years before now... 5,000 years before, yep. Um, on some random planet. So time dilation taken into effect. It could be any fucking time here. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we have the Big Bang. The Big Bang um, is, a docu- is a documented episode in Star Trek. Yes, Canon. yes. Um, Quinn of the Q Continuum was there just beforehand, mm-hmm. um, hiding out from the rest of the Continuum. Waiting to die. With Voyager. Yes. So Janeway and all, everyone was there at the Big Bang. Yeah. They got to see it. Cool. Put that on the CV. Yeah, yeah. Not to be confused with the Big Bang, the slash fic about Spark and Kirk. <laughs> I presume there is one. <laughs> I don't know. Rule 34. Rule, th- rule 34. There's, there's undoubtedly a Star Trek fanfic called The Big Bang in which characters fuck. The next episode is one we'll get to in a couple of uh, other episodes because six billion years ago, the Guardian of Forever is formed. Of course. Um, shortly after the Big Bang. Shortly after? A while after. I, I Actually, I don't know when canonically in Star Trek the Big Bang was. I, Whether it's 14 billion or it's like... I, I don't know what current science says about... Yeah, I mean, that sort of area of Star Trek is sort of fluid with the real science mm. behind it because, like, Star Trek has always tried to include somewhat realistic science um, along with all the space magic that goes on. Yeah. So, so it's, it's like... If current science says that the Big Bang was 14.6 billion years ago, then I would say that that's what Star Trek would agree on, even if they have mentioned yeah. in previous episodes that the Big Bang happened 25 billion years ago. Yeah. Like, d- d- same as, like, Star Trek mentions that the eugenics wars took place in 1996. Spoiler alert, no, they didn't. There's, there, there was in, no in our timeline. In, in our timeline, no. And and now they're bending over backwards to try and retcon that. And, and, and anyway, I'm, I'm I'm sidetracking again. Sorry, go. No, no, that's all right. Sidetracking is the nature of like what we're doing here. Um, what else happened? So yeah, so the Guardian of Forever was formed about six billion years ago, assuming the the universe was about you know, 8 billion years old. So there's about 8 billion years to fill in the gaps there. Yeah, yeah. So so for 8 billion years, nothing happened. Then the Guardian of Forever suddenly became, oh, right, I'll I'll do that then. Um, (laughs) Just came into existence. Ah. Two billion years after that um, was the master, like the the humanoid civilization from Next Gen that sprinkled genetic material into the oceans. The, that that turned everyone into races that could fuck. Yes, H- humanoids with bumpy heads or not bumpy heads. Four billion years ago, they sprinkled some shit in oceans, and now a Klingon can fuck a human. For for, for those of you unfamiliar with Star Trek, you may recognise that from Prometheus. It's the same damn thing. It's the same thing. For, 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 for those of you who are unfamiliar with Star Trek, what the fuck? <laughs> what are you doing here? Why are you listening to this nonsense? But yes, no, it's, the same bullshit happens in Prometheus. The the big tall dude melts himself into the yeah. Earth's oceans so that humans can evolve. But I mean, that was a little bit more recently done. That, yes, I mean that was that wasn't yeah, as no, no, far no. back as four. I think four billion doing it four billion years ago. Yes, is way too much of a stretch no yeah like that's um there's a lot of rube goldberg that has to happen for you to get humans starting four billion years ago yeah look like there's there's a the asteroid hitting the earth that made mammals the dominant species in on earth that that look like you didn't predict that by spoofing in the ocean no you look like like you the the whole basically everything that happens in Real evolution 
cannot be predicted by but, but, you, you can't set it all in motion four billion years ago. There's, there's too many other external factors. Uh, evolution in, in itself is a reaction to external factors. It's 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 adapting to your environment. Yeah. But of course, it could also be that we get like you know parallel evolution on multiple worlds, and we get Vulcans and Klingons and humans and platypuses. Yes, yes. Or that that dog with the horn. I don't recall this at all. Oh, there's there's a, there's a so they find an alien species, and it's just like a bloody Pomeranian with a with a plastic horn on its head. I, I think I'm suppressing something. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely to... a thing. I didn't just make this up. I promise. Can't can't wait to get to that one then. Yeah, yeah. Other ancient civilizations that have been established is oh, this this one. You, you remember this better than me. The Voth civilization, the, the dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, the Parasaurolophus. Yeah, so the evolved Parasaurolophuses. That was about sixty-five to hundred million years ago. So we've got the Voths, Sargon's people in the galaxy. Who was Sargon? Uh, Sargon, we were talking about this earlier. The um, original series um, episode, and he's like a godlike being or right. something. They encounter so many godlike beings. Just a few, aren't there? Um, the Takon Empire, that was the one with the Ferengi yeah, first yeah. contact thing that was just like a, a, just a generic previous civilization. That yeah, I'm, just like a precursor civilization who left their technology lying around and all died off. Yeah. Similarly, the Iconians were around 200,000 years ago that we hear about mm -hmm. here and there as we go along. And possibly about 8,000 years ago, the Dominion was formed. Yes. Um, Approximately. And, and, and then all our yesterdays. Then all of our yesterdays. Like, if you go on with the, the formation of the Dominion, like, I suppose it hasn't really been mentioned in canon, but when was the Borg established? When did they become a thing? Yeah, I think there's, I think there's mention of them existing around our 16th century or something mm. like that. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, yeah, they're like, yeah, but I don't think they've actually gone to the point of nailing that one down yet. No, no. It's, and look... If you, if, you, if you do know the answer to that, just start typing actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, I think you're fine. The Borg were established. Because we, we, do, we just don't know exactly when that, you know, no, when, no. when that woman got really lonely and decided to make all her friends, like, you know, just... A <laughs> <laughs> Nobody listens to me. I'm going to inject my nanites into their heads so that they think like me. We should talk about the name, should we? How much for just the podcast? Which is a really deep cut. It's 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 a very obscure reference, even among Star Trek nerds. There was a book by John M. Ford by John M. Ford called "How Much for Just the Planet," and it is a Star Trek musical. It is sort of a canon novel. It was, sort of. It was it was it was originally part of the original Star Trek novel series, and then someone read it. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they went wrong. That's where they they they, they read the book. And and they made a whole new subset of books for it. Of which there are two. Of which there are both two. Both written by John M. Ford. <laughs> so, John, you, you get your own corner. Sit over there and don't touch anyone else's stuff. So th th this is it. This is our own little canon corner. This is, this is where we, 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 are, we are just doing our thing outside of whatever the hell else is going on. Yeah, yeah. There, um, th there, there are other Star Trek podcasts that are far more professional than ours. We're just two dickheads who wanted to talk about Star Trek <laughs> and, and, and maybe get a sponsorship for dick pills. Yeah, if, if anyone does sell <laughs> dick pills and, and wants us to, like, you know, say how good they are for money, um, I'll, I'll give that a crack. We, we'll sell out at the drop of a hat. If you want to sponsor us, fucking get on my Twitter, get on Mix nothing because he's not on social media except for the, the one that he runs. I'm, I'm on plenty of social media. You're on one, like primarily one, people, which is Chinwag. Yeah, but people know what Mastodon is now. It's like it's yeah. just the whole thing. It's like, you know, heaps of people could just like follow me. They could, yes. We'll put some links in the description. We'll put some of something. links in the description. <laughs> anyway, if you want to give us money, please do. We, we, would, we are open to selling out. Is the I, point. I, 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 I can tell you, you'll find links to pretty much everything at prettygrouse.com. Prettygrouse.com, yes. That's, that's our thing. That, that's where you'll find links to all the DMCU. Yes. The Damon Mix Cinematic Universe. Phase one. Phase one. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is barely phase one. This is maybe phase 0 0.05. 
But um, this is this is this is this is the Hulk. This is the what? MC at this. Oh, the, yeah. This, this, is, this, is, this is the Incredible this Hulk. Is, this is Edward Norton. We're, we're, this, this is Edward Norton. At the moment, <laughs> we're going to get recast in like episode three with, with some more professional people, people who actually get what we're trying to do because oh. we don't. What else has happened in Star Trek? So like, you know, is there any real life Star Trek news? I suppose like a lot of productions just like not happening at the moment because of- yeah, everything's shut down at the moment. So we got some catching up to do. Yeah. Because um, we are recording this episode as the the SAG AFTRA strike has kicked into the next gear. Basically, yeah, um, basically. In, in solidarity with w, WGA. Um, yes. And please, producers, just give them what they want because yeah. they are the important people here. It's just like, you know... <laughs> like the writers are the ones who write the things. Like this is not... Without the writers... Anyway, I'm, I'm going to go ranty a little bit, but the writers are the ones... They're the words we want to hear. We don't want to hear fucking AI generated... Somebody did like a, an AI generated episode of South Park and it's the fucking worst thing I've ever seen. Like somebody just put in some prompts about, about writing an episode of South Park. It's about 11 minutes long. The The voices in it are sort of the weird, like just very flat sort of rough approximations of the characters in it. And it's just the worst. It's terrible. Don't watch it. I, I, I won't. I mean, I stopped watching South Park a long time ago. The fact that it was South Park is not the point. It's just like the, the, they're, they're selling this. This simulation mob was selling this as, as oh, well, this is a thing that we can do now. Well, look, we, we can produce television episodes without any writers and the AI. No, it's shit. Yes. It's terrible. Don't do it. Yes. Like, get writers to actually write things. That's the point. That would be great. Like, it, it, like us. Let, let, let us write things. I mean, Par- Paramount, we do have a couple of pitches. Yes, we like, do. Like, if you... If you, if you, if you <laughs> <laughs> it's, give us a call. I mean, yeah, you got a bit ranty about the whole, you know, strike thing. It's like, yeah, I, I 100% agree, solidarity and everything, but I, I have a particular p- personal rant could get into and probably will over the next few <laughs> recordings. <laughs> about, a, so, that's a teaser for future episodes. Well, just, just like, yeah, one of my personal bugbears is the lack of... Australian cultural representation in mainstream science fiction. We've yeah, we've discussed this, and this this is definitely going to come up in multiple episodes. Yeah, that, because yeah. I I think you know you, you we, we we talk about Star Trek having you know, like you know, you know Rome planet or you know Nazi planet or you know you know musical theatre planet or whatever. Mm. Uh, it's like I we still haven't had Australia planet. It's Australia planet. Yeah, Native American planet has happened. Yeah, it's like. No, where's Australian planet? But the, the, the whole the whole Chakotay thing throughout all of Voyager was just some guy making up shit <laughs> that had nothing to do with actual Native American culture. I, it was I, just like, ah, that sounds good. This yeah. this is this is what that means. Yeah, well, we could we we could do that too. We could like, do that. We, 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 we're offering to do that for Australia. <laughs> we we can <laughs> just just put an Australian in the main cast of the next Star Trek show, and we can write him. We can we can write the character. One problem that will maybe a problem to American audiences: there will be significantly more uses of the word "cunt" in than there has been throughout all. Of Star Trek thus far. Some of the barriers have finally been broken. I think the success of Deadlock, I think, is something we can all like you know point to and say Australian culture can be represented accurately on TV and Amazon will let you say cunt. Yes. That's pronounced culture, not you know like like culture. Culture culture. 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 You know. Bloody culture, mate, you know? Fucking fucking yeah, get amongst Yeah. All right. Well, let's let, let's 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 put a pin in this. Let's yes, and we'll be back next week to discuss all our yesterdays. All our yesterdays, not all of our yesterdays. Some of our yesterdays. Just a couple. Just a couple. One or two yesterdays. You just need to watch it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Homework. Yeah, but it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's shit. <laughs> Come back next week to, to hear us discuss this shit episode. Well, a little. Engage. Mr. War. Throw him in the brick. The theme song you just heard was the Picard rap, uh, written and composed by Nikolai Kingsley. Originally done on an Amiga 2000. In about 1992, it's just a collection of samples pulled from Nikolai's stack of videotapes and strung together. There we go. And that's how you make music, people. Where are we? Transporter on three. Engage. Oh, great. 
just going to get up that little cheat sheet, that little Wikipedia you're, page. You better delete it because of all that racist stuff you said. And look, I, 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 can't, I cannot support your opinions on Hitler. I'm sorry. My, my opinions that Hitler bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you said the last take. The published take is the only take that counts. Okay, fair enough. Computer and program.